Coming up next on Cooking with MFRD, we're back with a great recipe from firefighter Bo Jones that's sure to be a hit at your next get-together, barbecue bacon sushi. Hello and welcome to the 10th episode of Cooking with MFRD. I'm your host Ashley McDonald and we've got a great show lined up for you today. If you're out there on social media, you've probably seen the recipe barbecue bacon sushi. Well, firefighter Bo Jones is here today and he's perfected his own version of this recipe and he's here to share it with us. You're gonna need the following ingredients. Three quarters of a pound of thick cut bacon, one pound of hamburger, 80, 20 or less fat, no more, hamburger rub seasoning to taste, salt to taste, black pepper to taste, seven to eight dashes of Worcestershire, and smoked string cheese. For a quick and easy homemade barbecue sauce, you'll need one cup of Worcestershire, half a cup of brown sugar, or maybe a touch more, cap of distilled vinegar, ketchup to taste, and to thicken. Thank you for being here, Bo. So, barbecue bacon sushi, huh? This is interesting. Yes, well, it's uh, kind of a meat lover's delight. We have uh, bacon, we have hamburger, and we have cheese. I just can't get any better. So no raw fish, thank goodness. Yes, ma'am. All right, well, walk us through the recipe. Okay, well, um, basically we start off with um, a pound of hamburger meat, and I use uh, three tablespoons of a hamburger mix. We put that in there. Uh, we have salt, kind of to taste, and we have pepper. Gotta have a little black pepper. Now what kind of hamburger seasoning do you prefer? Well, I just buy the cheap stuff from Kroger's, yeah. the Kroger brand. Um, in this, it doesn't really make that much difference. So Just flavoring the meat up a little bit. That's right. Okay. Then you gotta have Worcestershire. Definitely. Go a little heavy on the Worcestershire. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, and then we just mix it all up here. And the best way is to get in there with your hands, obviously. That's so. right. And it does two things. Um, you like to have your hamburger sit out for a little while. That way it's workable. And then your, you know, the warmth from your hand actually makes it a little more pliable because you're gonna press this out over the top of the bacon. Ooh, that sounds good. It My favorite be. part about this whole thing is the bacon anyway. So when do we get to that? Just kidding. Right after this. <laughs> so you get a good mix here. That looks pretty good. Then we go wash our hands. Yeah, it's very important to wash your hands. Want to keep everything sanitary in here. So, uh, Bo, you were also in a backyard barbecue fest contest that MFRD participated in. We had a team. Tell us a little bit about that. All right. Um, there were about 50 contestants, I believe, nationwide. Um, they were, there were two different categories, one for regular cookers, professionals, and then they had a kind of an amateur category, which was for public safety. So it was fire, police, um, there were seven groups from that and we finished top. First first place in the uh, first responder division. So we got a nice little trophy to, to bring home with that. And all the thanks go to Nora Smith and Sean Wheeler. And Captain Nora Smith was actually on our pilot episode for cooking with MFRD. So shout out to her. And she is the one that cooks for us every day at the fire hall. Bo stationed at headquarters on Vine Street. And how long have you been with us, Bo? Uh, going on 12 years. Going on 12 years. That's good. I've That's been at really headquarters good. for about three of those years. Headquarters is a very busy station, one of our busiest stations. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to pat this bacon out and you want to get it nice and square because we're going to roll that up. That's where it gets its name, uh, just like sushi. So it's going to create an actual sushi roll with your bacon being um, seaweed, so to speak. Now, we get the thick cut for this because it's more uh, durable, I guess? Yes, it's easier to roll. Okay. And it cooks up real good, too. Um, and it adds a lot of flavor. The more bacon, the better. Well, of course. <laughs> All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and I minutes. found that seven pieces, whether you're using ripe bacon or you're using Kroger bacon, kind of work the best. Lucky number seven. That's right. So then we go straight into our hamburger meat. We want to take a little plug, just like that, and leave it off to the side. 
and that's going to be for a kind of like a cheese plug and you'll see in a minute when we get to that. Now you can also make this recipe in a hotter version. We're doing the mild. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about that, like what you would maybe add to the hamburger meat to spice it up a little bit. For that, I use, um, it's the steak rub from Kroger's, again, Kroger's brand. And um, it's a little spicier. And then what I do on top of that, um, same ingredient, salt and pepper, Worcestershire, but um, we use Deke's hot sauce, or not hot sauce, but um, hot pepper mix. It's got habaneros, jalapenos, um, I don't know what else he uses, but it's hot. And Deke was a retired MFRD captain shift training officer. His, his name is actually Ronald Jones. And he, I understand, has to put on full turnout gear to grind up these dried habaneros because they're so hot when he makes it. And he calls it gunpowder. Yes. So it can be a little spicy. Everybody from our fire department knows Deke's gunpowder. I would say a lot of people do. So we're almost done with this. And what you want to do, I'll set that to the side, is get your meat, make sure it gets all the way out to the edges, but you want to leave a little bit of space here, and that helps it kind of uh, wrap together okay. and hold together. Because your bacon is really what holds all of this together. And Bo, you've got two adorable little boys, Murray and James Michael, and do they like to help you make this recipe at home? Well, I don't let them touch the meat, but uh, as far as all the other, yes, they love it. They absolutely love it. They'll, they'll get in there and mix the, the barbecue sauce up, and we make all of our own barbecue sauce. We try to do everything from home. We do a lot of canning, other things like that. Kind of gets the uh, family involved. Okay, so next step, Bo, I guess we're gonna put some cheese in it. That's right. Um, what I've been using and I found works the best is a string cheese. This is smoked provolone. Yum. So we're going to add this in here, and this is what we're going to wrap up. And what you want to do is keep it off the edges, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. So just set it in there, slice it up, and then I like to add another half layer. Well, of course, we can't ever have enough cheese. No, not at all. This is a Oops. lot of protein anyway, so it's, it's good for us. Okay, and here's the tricky part. They do sell bamboo sushi mats for this, but you can do it with just a knife. So what you want to do is you get under it, tuck it up. I guess you have to have a fairly big knife to kind of yes. get you going there. Long, okay. a long knife. Then once you get it going, just keep it nice and tight. Get a good roll on it. It's looking like the best sushi I've ever seen. There you go. <laughs> and next thing you know, got a sushi roll. And now we save this little chunk of meat and we stick it on the ends. Well, that's pretty smart. I guess so the cheese doesn't run out. That's right, it's a cheese plug. Did you come up with that or was that part of the original recipe? That is not part of the original <laughs> recipe, but after three or four times of cooking it um, and losing some of my cheese, I did not like that. Can't lose the cheese. That so is correct. We're gonna use Bo's ingenuity here. Okay, and there we have a nice, beautiful barbecue bacon sushi roll. All right, and now you've got some barbecue sauce over there. At what point will you generally use that? Well, I always start it right off the bat uh, before I start anything else. I put all my ingredients in there, let it boil for about a minute, and then just sit there on low, and it cooks down and thickens up. And then once we put it in, after about 20 to 25 minutes, uh, we'll start basting. Okay. And then about every five minutes, get a nice crusty layer on top. Makes it really good. And you usually cook this on the grill, but for the purposes of today's show, we're going to be actually doing this in the oven. So we've already got the oven preheated to 350 degrees. And we're gonna be using a grill pan so that the fat droopings can end up in the pan and not in our bellies. That's right. Just gonna set that on there nice and pretty. All right. And here we go. And Bo's actually got one that he made us up last night and we're gonna finish up the, the prep on it before we can try it. Smells good. All right. Okay, and we'll cook that for about an hour. Okay. Okay, so what's our next step? We've taken this out of the oven, so would you generally take it out right after the hour and go ahead and roll it, or? Yes, you okay. would. Now, like you said, this was cooked yesterday, so um, everything's 
I'm hoping everything's going to work like we, we plan on it. But we're going to take this out, and this is fried onions. Yum. Yes, and so you've seen in all the sushi restaurants, they usually put a crunchy topping on top, but we're going to do the same. I don't know how hot that is. There we go. We're just going to take it and roll it all in there and get it all That's nice. That's better than sesame seeds anyway. These onions won't get stuck in your teeth. <laughs> nice and crunchy. Here we get that, that looks plate. good. Yeah, so we'll put this on our platter and get ready to yes. slice it we'll up. Move this over here. Okay, and I'm gonna let you slice it up and serve it up for us since you you've had plenty of experience with this because I don't want to mess it up. So now we just slice that up just like sushi. It smells so good. I wish that everybody at home could smell this. You see that? See how it peels open? All that cheese stays in there. Y'all get a tight shot there on that good looking sushi roll. Best looking sushi roll I've ever seen. <laughs> so it's off to the side. Okay, we're good. I've got enough to try now. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I want it, I want it. <laughs> I was just going to cut it off. <laughs> All right. You got okay. a fork? Yeah. Of course I do. Are you kidding me? And there's you <laughs> one. Thank you, ma'am. All right. This is the taste test. See, I didn't even worry about it. It's so tender that you can actually cut it with your fork. Yes. You don't really need a knife. Bo's just being polite, and I want, I want to go ahead yep. and eat it. <laughs> and this is our regular version. Mm. Really, really, really good. The salty from the bacon, the sweet from the barbecue sauce, the crunchiness from the onions, it's great. The bacon is what really adds all the flavor. Really does. I can only imagine if this was hot. I didn't even get any cheese in this bite. Let me get another mm. bite with cheese on it. And then what we'll typically do is we'll have the barbecue sauce and we'll put it in a little dipping bowl and that way, if you want some extra barbecue sauce, you just dip in it, eat it. So it's kind of like your soy sauce for your sushi <laughs> or That's your yummy right. sauce, whatever. <laughs> if you want this recipe or any of our past recipes, you can visit our website at www.murfreesboro.tn.gov slash cookingwithmfrd. And you can also view any of the past episodes on YouTube. Bo, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for what you do for this community. And also we would like to thank the Discovery Center for use of their demonstration kitchen. See you next time.